But to unlock the happiness and wealth promised to us, we must face a great challenge, the search for a blonde mistress. In the small village of Ophia lived a young man named Emeka. Emeka was known for his adventurous spirit. He loved exploring the forest and rivers around his village. But recently, something strange had been happening to him. Every night, he dreamt of a beautiful maiden with blonde hair. She had a kind smile and eyes that sparkled like the stars. The dreams were so vivid that Emeka felt he knew this woman already. In his dreams, they would walk together, talk and laugh. She seemed to understand him in a way no one else did. Emeka couldn't get her off his mind. He wondered what dreams meant. One morning, he decided to speak to his parents about it. Mama, Papa, I have been having these strange dreams, Emeka said during breakfast. I keep seeing a beautiful woman with blonde hair. His mother, Neka, looked concerned. What do you mean, my son? Every night, I see her in my dreams. It feels so real. I think she might be important, Emeka explained. His father, Obi, nodded thoughtfully. You should visit the chief priest, Emeka. He might be able to help you understand these dreams. Emeka heeded his father's advice and went to see the chief priest, Eze. The shrine was at the edge of the village, surrounded by tall trees. Emeka felt a sense of awe as he approached. Eze, I need your help, sir, Emeka said, bowing respectfully. Come in, my son. What troubles you? Eze asked, his voice calm and wise. Emeka told Eze about his dreams. The chief priest listened carefully, his eyes closed as if in deep thoughts. After a long silence, the chief priest opened his eyes and looked at Emeka. The maiden in your dreams is not just a figment of your imagination, as I said. She is real and holds the key to your happiness and wealth. But reaching her will not be easy. She comes from a distant village where strangers are not welcome. Emeka's heart raced. What must I do? Dibia Eze. You must embark on the journey to find her. But be warned, the path is dangerous and will test your strength, Eze replied. Emeka nodded, determination shining in his eyes. I will do whatever it takes to find her. Emeka returned home and told his parents about Eze's revelation. They were worried but had to support his decision. Emeka, please be careful, the mother said, hugging him tightly. The world outside our village can be dangerous. Please be careful. The next morning, Emeka packed his bags and bid farewell to his parents. The father gave him a small bag of foodstuffs and traditional walking stick. May the gods protect you, my son. As Emeka left the house. With a heavy heart, 
but a determined spirit. Emeka set off on his journey. He walked for days, crossing rivers and climbing hills. He encountered wild animals and had to fight and find shelter in caves. Each night, he dreamed of the blonde maiden, her spouse giving him strength and hope to continue his journey. As Emeka journeyed further from his village, the terrain became more challenging. He had to go through dense forest and dangerous paths. One evening, as he was setting up a camp, he heard a rustling sound behind him. Turning quickly, he saw a group of men approaching. Who are you? And what are you doing here? One of them asked. I am a maker. I am from Ophia village. I am on a journey to find a woman who has been appearing in my dreams. Emeka responded. The men exchanged glances and then laughed. <laughs> dreams, you see? That sounds like a joke. But you seem brave, perhaps. You can help us. The leader of the group, Chinedu, stepped forward. We are hunters. We have been tracking a dangerous animal that has been terrorizing our village. If you help us, we will guide you through the next village. Emeka agreed, and for the next few days, he joined the hunters in their quest. They tracked the animals through the forest, finally confronting it in a clearing. Emeka fought bravely alongside the other hunters, and together they defeated the animal and put it in a cage. Thank you, Emeka, Chinedu said. You have proven your courage. We will keep our promise and guide you. After parting ways with the hunters, Emeka continues his journey with their guidance. He eventually reached a village that looked different from any he had seen before. The huts were larger and the people wore colorful clothing. This must be the village, Emeka thought to himself, feeling a mix of excitement and fear. As he entered the village, the villagers were suspicious of him. He approached an elderly woman sitting outside her hut. Excuse me, Grandma. I am looking for a woman with blonde hair. She has been appearing in my dream, Emeka said politely. The old woman's eyes widened in recognition. You speak of Adora, the maiden of light. She's so beautiful, but be warned. Stranger, our village does not welcome outsiders. Emeka's heart sank, but he was determined to find Adora. He wandered through the village, trying to avoid troubles. Eventually, he found a small hut at the edge of the village. A beautiful woman with blonde hair was tending to the garden outside it. Adora, Emeka called out softly. The blonde woman turned, and Emeka's breath caught in his throat. It was her, the maiden from his dreams. Yes, I am Adora. Who are you? She asked, her voice so melodious. My name is Emeka. I have traveled a long way to find you. You have been appearing in my dreams, and I was told you hold the key to my happiness and wealth. 
Emeka replied. Adora looked at him with a mixture of surprise and curiosity. All right, come inside. We need to talk. Inside Adora's hut, Emeka told her everything. His dreams, the chief priest's words, his journey, and Adora listened intently. Her eyes never leaving his. I have also been dreaming, Adora said quietly. I saw a brave young man coming to find me. I believe you are that man. On hearing this, Emeka felt a surge of hope. What does it all mean, Adora? The gods have brought us together for a reason, Adora explained. But to unlock the happiness and wealth promised to us, we must face a great challenge. Adora told Emeka about a sacred cave hidden deep within the forest. Inside the cave was a powerful artifact, guarded by a false sun spirit. They had to retrieve the artifact to fulfill their destiny. We must go together, Adora said, but be prepared, Emeka. The spirit will test us, so we need to be wise enough to win this battle. The next morning, Emeka and Adora set out for the sacred cave. They walked through the dense forest, guided by Adora's knowledge of the land. As they approached the cave, a sense of fear filled the air. We must be careful, Adora warned. The spirit guiding here is powerful and tricky. They entered the cave and darkness enveloped them. Emeka held a torch, lighting their way. Deep inside, they found a large chamber with a pedestal in the center. On the pedestal lay the artifact, a glowing crystal. Suddenly, a booming voice echoed through the cave. Who dares you to enter my territory? Sorry. We seek the artifact to fulfill our destiny. Emeka responded boldly to the voice. The spirit laughed. You must prove your worth. Only then will you receive the artifact. The spirit set forth a series of tests to challenge Emeka and Adora. The first test was one of courage. They had to walk through a field of fire without hesitation. Emeka and Adora held hands and walked together, their love and determination shielding them from the flames. The second test was one of wisdom. They had to solve a complex riddle. Emeka and Adora put their heads together. Thinking hard, finally, Adora's eyes lit up and she whispered the answer to Emeka. They spoke it aloud and the spirit nodded in approval. The final lesson was one of compassion. They had to show kindness to a creature in need. As they walked deeper into the cave, they found a wounded bird. Emeka gently picked it up and Adora used her knowledge of herbs to heal it. The bird flew away and the spirit reappeared. You have proven your worth. The spirit said, the artifact is not yours. 
a Mecca and Adora took the glowing crystal. As they held it, a bright light enveloped them, chilling them with warmth. They felt a deep connection to each other and to the world around them. With the artifact in hand, they left the cave and returned to Adora's village. The villagers were amazed by their bravery and welcomed Emeka as one of their own. Emeka and Adora got married in a beautiful ceremony celebrated by both villages. They used the power of the artifact to bring prosperity and happiness to their marriage and the village at large. This story shows more about the power of dreams turned to reality. Do you know that South Omar Cave is a special place in Ethiopia? known for being the longest cave in the country and as at 1972 it was the longest in africa it's famous for its beautiful underground tunnels which were curved out by the rahib river over many years inside the cave there are Amazing rock formations like huge pillars that make it look like a magical underground world. People also find the cave interesting because it has a rich history and is considered a sacred site by some local communities. Thanks for watching. Love from the classic stories.